Hey everyone, it's Professor Rako here. We're continuing on our chapter on pensions. So this is our first time that we're introducing a pension worksheet. So our first couple of videos, we just talked about the different types of uh, retirement plans, you know, our defined contribution, defined benefit. And then we went through some of the issues in the accounting for defined uh, benefit plans, specifically looking at the uh, over, versus over, over versus underfunded, and then to get our pension asset or liability. And then uh, our components of pension expense. Now we're going to start putting things together into a worksheet. Um, and so if you're using the KISO book, uh, they, they really, I mean, they use the uh, worksheets throughout. The uh, Spiceland book does not. It kind of puts it in at the end of the chapter. I'm a big fan of using the worksheet. It makes things way easier. So if you're using the Spiceland book, it's going to be taught a little bit different, but you can still do the worksheet to do it. And trust me, the worksheets are, uh, I, I feel, are way easier. It just keeps everything nice and neat and almost like a Excel spreadsheet uh, type format. So uh, we'll get going with that. So a worksheet is just a tool that we're going to use to record the information. Uh, so here's our given information for this uh, problem that will carry this problem throughout the next several videos, just adding stuff each year. All right. So if you notice the beginning balances, notice they say January 109 for the PBO and the plan assets are both 150. All right. So what that means is we are evenly funded. So there's no pension asset or liability right because the difference between those would be our pension asset or liability so we're starting at a place where we're fully funded all right so we can see we have service costs actual return uh contributions and benefits all right so these two are new so if you look at the last video these two are not components of pension expense but we still need to uh take them into consideration all right but when we're doing the worksheet you'll see that those two items will not be in the pension expense column all right, then lastly, we have the settlement rate, which, which is 10%. Remember, the settlement rate is used to calculate the interest cost. So in this one, we're going to have the first three components of pension expense. If you look back to the last video, service cost, interest cost, and the actual return on plan assets. All right, and then what we'll do is work through the worksheet to do a summary journal entry. All right, now before we do the worksheet, I'm going to kind of show you how each thing uh, affects the different uh, accounts that it will affect right now come test time you would not write this out but the first time through it's always helpful to see this so let's just walk through the items that we're going to uh, consider in this problem and uh, and then when we go to the worksheet we'll do exactly what we're saying we're going to do right here all right so service costs remember it's a component of pension expense and if you look back at that previous example i said that it increases pension expense all right, so when we go our journal entry, we'll put that number in as a debit under pension expense, whatever the number is. All right, and then remember, service cost is our people work another year. Therefore, we are going to owe them a little bit more when they retire, so it increases our obligation. Remember, our obligation is a credit balance, so we'd increase it with a credit. All right, interest cost. Remember, interest cost is the PBO at the beginning of the year times the settlement rate. So in this problem, we have 150,000 times 10%. All right, so that's going to be 15,000 is going to be our interest cost, All right? You'll have to calculate that most problem in most problems, but it's a pretty easy little calculation. All right, remember we also said that that also increases pension expense and it also increases the PBO. All right, so I typically, when I'm doing a problem, I'll just knock these two out together right at the beginning because they, they behave the same way, All right? All right, the actual return on plan assets. Now, remember, if you look back in the last video, we said this decreases pension expense. All right, so when we get to the worksheet, we're going to put it as a credit in the pension expense column. And then remember, it's a return on the money that's invested with the trustee. So this increases the fair value of the plan assets. Okay, it's the actual return. So that would be a debit in that column. All right, contributions. Now remember, contributions and benefits here are not components of pension expense. So they won't have an increase or decrease to pension expense. All right, so contributions are us, the company, simply funding the plan, us sending money to the trustee to fund the plan. All right, so it's going to decrease our cash balance. OK, so we know that we'll do that with a credit and it's going to increase the fair value of the plan assets because, remember, we're sending money to the trustee to be invested. And then the benefits paid. Now, look, the benefits paid is the trustee 
paying the retirees. All right. So the trustee is actually the one administering the money, the checks to the retirees, not us, the company. We fund the plan and then the trustee takes it from there. All right. So this is going to decrease uh, the PBO because remember, our obligation is to pay our retired employees their benefits. Well, if we do that, then that's meeting a portion of that obligation. So it'll decrease that, decrease our obligation, the PBO. But it's also, since it's being paid by the trustee, it also uh, uh, reduces the uh, plan assets as well. All right, so this is how they would handle it. So like I said, on a test, you would never write this out. You'd go straight to the worksheet on the next page. All right, so let's look at the worksheet. Remember this stuff here, and then we'll flip over. And what we're going to do is just drop the numbers in. All right, so this is your pension worksheet. All right, so notice they have some columns up at the top. Uh, headings up there. And if you notice here, we kind of have this little divider line right here. All right. So everything to the left of that is my uh, for my summary journal entry. And then on the right of it, the PBO and the plan assets, that's really just me keeping up with the balances in those accounts. All right. So let's walk through and just do exactly what we said. So we said service cost is a component of pension expense. So we're going to have a debit here and a credit here. Now look, your book is going to put a little DR and a CR there, but for the sake of space and time, I'm just going to put uh, make positive numbers as my debits and uh, parentheses around all my credits, just because when we get to, when we expand this worksheet in a few videos down the road, it gets to where it's a little bit smaller and I, I kind of run out of space. All right, the interest cost we calculated is 15000 Remember, that is just like the service cost, so debit to pension expense, credit to the PBO. All right, actual return, and we said that reduces pension expense, and it was 15000 And we come over here, and it increases the value of the plan asset. So all we're doing is exactly what we said to do on the previous page. All right, this contributions, remember, is us funding the plan, so it decreases the plan. And the money is sent to the trustee, so it increases the amount with the trustee of the plan assets. And then the P, uh, then the benefits paid, remember we said that decreases the obligation with the debit, but it also decreases the uh, plan assets because remember it's the trustee paying our retirees. All right, so a couple of things here. Notice one, benefits paid is the only thing that doesn't affect the summary journal entry side. It's just really affecting the PBO and the plan assets. All right. And another thing to notice is, uh, well, I'll say that in a second here. So if we come down here to the summary journal entry, now we're just netting things out, all right? So pension expense is 12. This is 10,000. And then what we're doing here, this number right here is just a plug number to make it balance, all right? And so you can see as a journal entry, our debits have to equal our credits. Uh, and that's what we're doing there with the 2,000. All right, now something else you could do. Now, I don't like doing this, but other books will teach it this way. They will do a, a debit and a credit both on the summary journal tree side, meaning now you don't necessarily have to write this out on yours if you have this in front of you, but they would do this and this. So each row would have its own, would be adjusting the asset or the liability. And then this and then this. All right, so you can see these numbers right here match up with the numbers over here all right and so if you if you net those out you can see it's a negative 2000 all right so i just leave this stuff off because i can just net the number i can just plug this 2000 down here at the bottom and be good and it's just less stuff i have to keep up with on this sheet okay so however uh your teacher teaches it may be the best way for you to do it i typically try to make things as easy as possible and by leaving that out of that column and just plugging it at the end i think it just keeps the, the worksheet a little cleaner and it makes uh things a little bit faster for you uh especially that's important come test time and then we want our ending balances all right so pension expense obviously is an expense it's going to get closed out so we don't worry about that cash there's going to be a million other transactions that affect cash so we're not worried about that so we're kind of just worried about these accounts so this was zero so now it's a negative two thousand our ending balances here are 168 credit that's our obligation and this works out to be 166. all right now the nice thing about doing worksheets when you're doing the difference between the PBO and the plan assets, if you look back to the first, I'm sorry, the second video, all right, you can see that's off by $2,000. All right, these numbers have to equal. 
If you, those two numbers do not equal, you have, you've missed something in the problem. Okay. So remember, because the difference between your PBO and your plan assets tell you the funded status of the plan, which is your pension asset or liability. If you look here, we have a live obligation of 168 and only 166 invested. So therefore, we are underfunded by 2000, which means we have a pension liability of 2000. And that is exactly what this balance right here tells us. Now, look, if you're, you know, some professors were going to make you write out the summary journal entry. Now, look, the summary journal entry is right here. I typically don't make my students write it out because it, it, all I'm doing is taking this and writing it out in journal entry format. So I'd have pension expense for 12000 You'd have uh, cash for ten, and the pension asset or liability. It'd be a pension liability. I typically just call it pension asset or liability because it can go back and forth. For two thousand. All right, now look. So obviously, if you can see this this row right here, and you're an intermediate too, you can write out the journal entry. So I typically don't make my students do that because if they've done the journal entry correct, obviously, I'm sorry, if they've done the worksheet correct, obviously they can just write that journal entry out in journal entry format. However, some teachers might make you uh, do that, so keep that in mind. A couple of things: looking ahead, test taking skills. Great multiple choice questions give you the given information like in this problem and say, what is pension expense for, at the end of the year? What is the PBO balance at the end of the year? What is the plan assets? All right. So once again, it's asking for what's in this column or what's in this column or what's in this column. So if you do the worksheets, in my mind, if I get a multiple choice question like that, I'm just thinking what goes in that column in the worksheet from the given information. And then I'm at I'm netting all those numbers together. So a little test taking tip there because those are easy multiple choice questions to ask. Uh, so kind of keep that in mind and I'll point that out in future videos. All right. So this was kind of our baseline video. It had our first three components of pension expense, which is service costs, interest costs and actual return. What we're going to do next is add in a service cost and uh, start amortizing that service cost and then continue to build over the next several videos. So hopefully this helped get you started. Uh, make sure you tune in next time as we keep building on this. Uh, so I hope you're enjoying these. Please share them with your friends uh, in your classroom. Hopefully it will help them, especially come test time. All right. Thanks, guys.